once divorced twice married mother of one though of course some sites say that i have two children i don't know where the second one is uh, a wife a daughter a sister a friend a tv presenter a compare an actor in all mediums a radio jockey a model a dubbing artist but most importantly a woman who has made all of the above choices when life handed me that menu why not i said i've always believed that you are always given a choice in life because you are the one who has the gumption to handle it so i've always said seize the day and make the most of it anytime anything comes to you now along the way you should always do things for yourself that make you proud to say that i did this all on my own steam that's always been one of my mantras throughout my life uh it's it's you know it's quite quite an adrenaline rush when you look at yourself in the mirror and feel proud of all of the choices that you've made i think everybody would agree to that now why that's the topic for today solve for why is a question that kind of only arrives when we are constantly second guessing our present okay every time we try to answer that question why the variable changes and we always start questioning our present so isn't it better to find the solution for that why before this whole conundrum comes into our, to our to our life therein lies the path to your happiness feeling complete in yourself independent of anyone else or anything else now in my life i've done a myriad of things okay be it personally be it professionally at 17 i decided to start modeling alongside my engineering studies i got married in my final year of engineering all of 20 i moved to the uk once i graduated a young bride at 21 my first marriage there once there i, I you know i didn't work as an engineer i wasn't one of those people who uh, you know wanted to go and do an ms or sit there designing a printed circuit board i was suchi and there was a whole lot of other things going on in my head which i wanted to do but i never i never planned on the acting okay so now it's during this uh, stint of work that i got my first audition this is where the whole journey began okay i got my the chance to have my first audition for a french film to play the lead in a french film called uh, la prie d'une femme which was about the dowry system in india having no uh, background in acting i had only played a mouse in cinderella in school i had played uh, uh, you know two roles in amateur theater when i was you know 10 12 years old in bombay uh, uh, but just with all of that only under my belt i went for this audition now there were a lot of other girls over there uh, jennifer jaffrey was the casting agent there were a lot of other girls who were all trained studied in radha shada you name it all of these schools and um, i remember the girl in front of me who went before me uh, we were given two scenes very intense scenes which we had to learn in 10 minutes and go and do it for her and i heard her telling uh, i heard her telling uh, jennifer that uh, you know we can't really imbibe the character etc etc so it was my turn i went in there and 10 minutes later so uh, uh, jennifer told me why don't you sit down and do the reading now this was as i told you very two very intense scenes of the movie where i had to break down and cry etc etc but uh, when she said uh, please sit down here and read i said uh, no ma'am i'd like to act out the scene for you she said oh, okay um, how many years have you been acting i said uh, this is my first audition so naturally she was a bit surprised and she said okay fine it's all right act out use the papers it's fine i said no i don't want to use the papers i don't want to use the script i'll uh, just remember what i remember and i will make it up along the way if i forget and uh, uh, you just play the other part at the end of that audition at the end of the second scene i had broke actually broken down i was crying and i was at her feet at the end of that scene i will never forget this you know i really i will never forget this because this changed my life she picked me up and she put me on the sofa next to her and she looked at me straight and she said suchitra please tell me the truth how many years have you been acting and that is what changed my life and that is what got me to realize that this is where i want to be this is what i want to do and and you know this is where my journey is supposed to take me so now do what it takes to turn every stone you know a friend once told me this this was a you know uh, this was the start i would say this movie was the start to me promising myself to turn every opportunity into a journey towards the next adventure in the path that i had chosen as my career doing my part honing my skill you know being the best at what Uh, i had chosen to be that was what was in my mind after that now post which another life changing uh, decision you know uh, had to be taken as a drifting apart of souls happened this i'm talking about personally my my ex husband and myself 
uh, well, I had to move back to Mumbai while he was posted in Tokyo. And that's what kind of caused the drifting apart of two people, an amicable uh, divorce. But this was, of course, uh, I have to admit, a hiccup in my personal life. Uh, because it was the big decision that hangs over your head of getting the, the divorce and it had to be addressed. Now, many of my loved ones, you know, and I say this for all, uh, for all the girls and uh, uh, all the people watching, uh, you will be influenced by a lot of people, uh, people who you think, you know, have your best interest in art and sometimes do. Many of my loved ones insisted that I would be very much happier in Tokyo being Mrs. So-and-so. Yeah. But I... I, th then itself, I knew that it didn't take anybody else for me to have my happiness. You know, I knew that I could create it for myself, um, not being restricted by geographical boundaries or uh, or personal lows. That's one strength I've always had. Uh, never say never. Uh, you know, it and it didn't scare me then. It doesn't scare me now. So coming back to the story at 27 here i was with bags in hand at my parents house uh, you know i was the first ever divorce in my mother's side of the family in history uh, you know but the only thing that i told them as they stood there with their arms wide open was that you know i promised to make something of myself uh, without compromising on the values that they had instilled in me and without stepping on anybody's toes to get there you know i've always i've always said don't sit around waiting for things to happen make those opportunities happen for you you know it's always been my constant mantra and today at 50 it still is so this is what urged me at, in 1997 to go out there and actually put it into practice by getting a job for myself as a vj uh, of the very famous channel b this is how that happened now i met the general manager of the channel at a party and uh, um, he uh, was, you know, we were chatting and he said, oh, you know, I'm the, I'm the GM of, a, of this channel called Channel B and it's a very, it's a very interesting channel. And I said, yes, yes, actually it is. I very calmly looked at him and I said, it's a wonderful channel, uh, Channel B, but frankly, it's your loss that I'm not on it. And uh, he was, uh, he was obviously very, very stumped. Uh, you know, he said, really, you want to prove it? Then uh, in a week's time, he gave me, uh, you know, the opportunity to get an audition. That's literally saying that one sentence to him. Uh, you know, going out there and getting it for myself is what I did. And he said, uh, come in uh, next week for an audition, which also led to two weeks later, uh, me getting a call from Hong Kong saying that they were creating a show for me called Simply South and uh, that I was officially now a VJ at Channel B. So that story happened over there. I thrived at that channel. It was the place to be. It was the job to have, you know, when you're still uh, young, per se, you know, 27, 28, uh, and you've had things like a divorce behind you. It's great to be able to stand on your feet again and prove something, uh, you know, to everybody and to yourself more than anything else. Now, despite that, the actress in me at that point, uh, while I was still a VJ at Channel B and comparing jobs started happening, etc., the actress in me started getting opportunities, the first of which was the opportunity to do Dance Like a Man, uh, which was the play uh, that I started way back in 1997. I'm still doing it now. 23 years later, 650 shows nearly across the world from New Zealand to the other end of America. And the same four people until last year were doing it. Only one person's changed now. But 23 years, you know, uh, uh, and we're still doing it, as I said. This play dance like a man. Uh, and I'm still in that. So theatre started happening uh, with this. And after that, I did a lot uh, a lot more shows with uh, Lilette Dubé and Primetime Theatre Company. Um, so life is not always uh, a bed of roses, you know rejection at auditions uh people saying no which many take as failure yeah i use them as stepping stones many take as uh, you know uh, they take it personally when you're rejected for a job or whatever i still use that as a stepping stone uh to be able to take no as an answer is definitely a very very big strength to be able to adapt that's an even bigger strength Adaptability is the biggest strength that anybody can have. And that has been a major part of, our, of my journey. I'm giving my 100% to everything that I chose to do, you know, to, to, to make something of anything that people had put their trust in me, knowing that I was the one who could make a success, uh, success of it. Uh, so no one else could play my part in that. And for that reason, I had to give my 100% come, come what may. In between all of this, love, relationships, breakups, tears, you know, all of that followed. Uh, but uh, they all played an important part, I would say, in 
making Suchi who she is today. So I thank every single one of those people who touched my life in some way, who taught me lessons, who broke my heart into a million pieces. Um, and in spite of that, I can truthfully say that I, I truly and still believe, you know, in love. And at that time, I still knew that it would find me again and again and again and again. And I wasn't going to get scared by it. But, you know, um, uh, it, I was not going to base my level of happiness on someone else being in my life or not at that point. You are enough to make that happen for yourself. You know, uh, you can find it all uh, in, in things that you do and you find it all right there in you. Another journey that started happening, of course, is music, which has always been part of my life, you know, since I was a kid. And when I, I connect that with rejections, because the very first project I did was a musical album, which uh, music album, which I was completely rejected by the record company, you know, and here was I with stars in my eyes thinking I'm going to be a pop star. And they rejected it, saying that, no, this is not the kind of music that people are listening to right now. So sorry. After signing the contract, this is what happened, you know. So, um, as I said, don't allow no's and don't allow rejection to get to you. So, what did it do for me? It made me actually start working again, uh, you know, with another uh, um, another wind under my wings, uh, with Gusto for my first album, which was called Such Is Life or Suchi's Life, uh, which was an indie pop album, which was released in 2011. And uh, presently, my second album which is, uh, you know, an ode to the history of rock and roll that is ready and will be released soon. That's an English rock album. And I hope that uh, uh, all of you, you know, get to uh, hear it sometime. Now, uh, another job that I've done and I started doing was uh, that of a dubbing artist. Um, you know, I've been responsible for making uh, people like Angelina Jolie, uh, Emma Thompson, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, uh, Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, uh, Maggie Q, many other women uh, speak convincingly on screen in Hindi, believe it or not. So here was another part to play on this stage called life. How was I going to be able to juggle, uh, you know, everything? How was I going to be able to balance this multifaceted career? As I said, I was still doing all of these things all together, time management, but it was only me at that point that I had to think about now. Responsibility, taking on, you know, a, a family, a husband, a child. Was I going to be able to do all of this? You have all of those doubts in your head. It's only normal that you do. But then again, I thought, I mean, I'm, age is catching up with me. I need to have a baby at the right time. So I did. And it only takes one decision, frankly speaking, you know, for all of you who are watching, it takes one decision, that of deciding to make a success of anything that you take on, you know, knowing that you would do the best that you can. And uh, that's all that's all that's needed, you know. So my husband for me has been that he's been the wind beneath my wings uh, and he has put that into practice by, uh, you know, letting me fly, letting me be the person I am and uh, letting me uh, live my life to the fullest, I would say, you know. So you've got to, as a woman, uh, in this day and age, all it takes is, I think, time management, priority setting, selflessness. These are the three things that I would uh, say any working woman needs to know how to balance. It's uh, so it's always nice to appreciate the people who are in your life. You know, it takes it takes nothing. Just, uh, you know, once in a while, look at them and say, thank you for just being you. Thank you for being there for me. And, you know, you get so much back in return and, and you know that they'll always, always be there. Uh, you know, I now experience in this in this day and age, the new wave, the new wave of uh, of showbiz. You know, it's fascinating when you have 27 years of experience uh, 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 behind behind you <clears throat> to see how the industry has actually evolved and, uh, you know, how lucky one has been to have been part of that and seen the journey and now be part of this. You know, these life lessons that, you know, that, uh, or, you know, at least what I call life lessons, uh, what I've shared with you today are also you know, what I, what I pray my child Anika kind of imbibes from me, that will be the biggest, uh, you know, biggest present for me if she, if she gets all of this and she kind of puts it into practice into her life. But it is her journey, you know, it's her unique journey which she has to take. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope, but she has that strength to turn around and say anything is possible. So much done, so much more to achieve, miles to go before I sleep. Well, it will never be enough, you know, for somebody who loves doing what they do as much as I do. I think that shows in the, in the work that I do. And that's why I'm still here. That's why I'm still uh, doing stuff. And that's why, you know, I say, never say die. There will always be more 
that you want to achieve there is there will always be more that you want to try there will always be more that will make you happier and yes that is all right that's okay you can think about all of those things but solve for your own unique why after all you are all still here because you are capable of finding your own solutions reach for the stars for there won't be any more fences to stop you all that's required from you just to do that is commitment drive integrity to give it your best shot the jab tak hai jahan is what i say till the end of your days that's what you need to do give it your 100% and that's what makes for a life not wasted